Okay, all right, guys, welcome once more. Uh, let's see what we have next. Uh, okay, now we have design parameter settings. Okay, design parameter settings. This is very important. Very important. Okay, <clears throat> so what we're going to be doing now is uh, we go back to our application. Okay, let me let me reduce this. Okay, so we are going to set our design parameters. Other design parameters, we are going to set the the concrete strengths, you know, we're going to set the cube and cylinder concrete strengths. We are going to set the uh, steel tensile strength and the soil bearing capacity and the rest of other things. So let's quickly check my design parameters first. So if you check here, I have all the design parameters, okay? I have all my design parameters here. So my impose load, just like we've had already, impose load is live load or you can call it variable load. It's 1.5 my finishes is 1.2 partition allowance 1 kilonewton okay so but all of this has been factored into uh into the dead load okay this has been factored into the dead load already okay so soil bearing pressure i'm taking 100 kilonewton but don't forget this must be gotten from your soil investigation so you don't just start designing foundation for any building without having the the soil uh, parameters, the soil bearing capacity, and the settlement uh, analysis. Slab design FCU. FCU is the characteristic uh, characteristic strength of concrete. Okay, so I'm using 25 newton per millimeter square. All right. Then slab density, slab design FY. That is for the steel tensile strength is 410. That's what I'm using. Then uh, beam design is the same thing with slab. So all my concrete strength is the same. Then all my uh, steel tensile strength is the same for all the elements, including foundation, okay? Then density of concrete 24, okay? So you bear this in mind because we're going to be imputing this into the software. All right, so we come back here. Let's go back to story one. Okay, so what we're going to be doing now is uh, the parameters. We're going to set our design parameters, okay? So I go to analysis, go to building analysis. It's going to save the model. Sorry for the delay. I don't know what's going on. So it's saving the model so we can proceed. Ah, this is taking too much time. This is taking too much time. Okay, we are here now. So what we'll do now is uh First, let's click on edit material. Let's edit our material. Okay. All right. For for my slab, don't forget for slab for the concrete column, I'm gonna be using the same strength of steel for everything. So most time you see C20 through 25. People don't really understand what it means. The the first 20 here is cylinder strength, while the next one is cube strength. You know, when you're doing your compressive strength, if you're using a cylinder uh, uh, material, you know, to do your concrete strength, you know, you'll be having your strength in this in these limits. But if you're using concrete cube for that same type of concrete mix, okay, you'll be having 25, okay. So this is what I'm going to be using. Then apply to all members, so everything is the same, okay. All right, so I go to steel grade. So 410, I'm using 410 for my tensile strength of steel, apply to all members, okay. Okay, so the next thing is your rebar, I want to be using Y16, so select and unselect, so just take Y16. I just want to use Y16 for my columns, just that. Then uh, I don't have concrete walls, so I don't need to bother about this. Concrete beams, I will be using Y16 and Y12. 
y16 and y12 for my concrete beams okay then slab slab i want to use uh, select and on select i want to use y12 you can use y10 okay so i'm using y12 for my design okay then uh, links links you're talking about your stirrups okay uh, so we're going to be using y8 for my links that's what i'm using okay so we don't have rib slab so we don't need to set anything here so you go to foundation floor you know we are using the same concrete grade okay don't forget what we have here same concrete grade okay then uh you now come to reba reba i want to be using just y12 or through y12 only okay then the soil what type of soil is it so you need to get this from your soil investigation okay if it's sand so i'm going to be using silt let me use silt clay so i'm going to be using that okay okay uh then okay all right then you come to parameters come to parameters you click on this uh don't forget we are using bs8110 so this has already been selected our foundation soil bearing capacity is 100 okay then sub subgrade uh, subgrade coefficient is uh, soil bearing capacity divided by settlement okay so for now we don't know the settlement of this foundation so we just leave it by that so your soil subgrade coefficient is soil bearing capacity divided by the uh, by settlement times factor of 60. so if i'm having a, a settlement of let's say uh let's say two millimeters or let me say five millimeters so i'll be having 100 divided by uh, by uh by 100 by 50 millimeters or whatever be my settlement times uh, factor of safety maybe 2.5 depending on the the uh, procedure you're using okay so i'll just leave this at default just the way it is uh is this really important okay fine okay so for a uh, uh, live load participation factor you leave this at default okay you leave that at default and in your selection of uh, of the foundation base dimension we should be focusing on only the the uh the dead load okay we don't need to factor anything because the moment you're going to factor you're going to be having uh too much of value and it's going to give you so much uh uh you know uh dimension for your for your base and for your foundation area so that's not really important so just leave it at that uh this okay is that defined brazing for columns and walls already our columns are braced in both direction they are braced with walls okay so title you can decide to change your title check by made by you can decide to put this if you want to all right so i haven't done that you just click on okay and you can close all right we're going to come back to that so the next thing we are going to do now is each of these walls you know each of them for the ground for the first floor each of them are carrying a wall load so we are going to define the wall load on each of the beams okay so click on this on any of the beams right click on it when you right click go to uh, edit beam wall load okay edit beam wall load yeah so you click on that okay so we are here now okay we are here so our load is wall don't forget is wall and uh we need to find out what is your wall unit weights depending on the size of the wall you're using if you're using nine inches that's two to five or you're using 150 so i'm going to be using uh going to be using or uh, i'm supposed to use okay let me use three three kilonewton per meter square for my my wall unit weights okay the height of the wall is uh 2700 don't forget it's 3000 minus the beam depth okay so 2.7 2.7 then wall thickness is uh, 0.225 all right all right so for sure we're going to be having openings you're going to have window openings and you're going to have door opening so you did this let's say did the opening all right so i'm going to add this uh my my window 
think my window was uh, I have one meter by 1.2 so I just I'm just gonna take one let's say 1,000 by 1,200 so I'll just use this uniformly for everything okay yeah so this should be somewhere at the middle so I have 200 sorry 2,000 let's see where that is oh that's too far 1,500 I need it at the center and then from the bottom from the bottom is 900 okay so that's that for the window so we've decided we've created an opening so for sure the dead load from this area is going to be deducted from the entire area of the wall okay so okay and that's that so if you check initially it was 8 point something but now we have 7.2 as the total dead load per, per, per meter okay on that beam all right so when you're done with this you click on okay all right so you can see the beam looking different from every other beam because load has been applied on it so you can click on it right click again and say copy beam wall load okay copy beam wall load this is it click so i've copied that wall load i'm going to distribute it to every other member so i can quickly select everything right click on each any of the beam and say paste copied beam wall load okay then it's going to have me wall load defined on the selected beams will be replaced by the load by the wall load copied to the clipboard yes that's what i want the next thing is the opening do i want to make the opening you know i, I want to distribute the opening for all the beams yes i need it like that all right so if we check all our beams are stronger beams now they are all carrying wall loads okay then that's not enough you also need to go to story two don't forget this is carrying roof load so we also need to factor that in so you click on this right click and you go to edit member load okay edit member load click on it all right so uh you click on this and you click on new load it's going to be uniformly distributed load i'm going to call this roof load okay roof load and my roof load my dead load for my roof is going to be uh mm, 1.2 is enough okay then we're still going to have some live load let's say maybe you're constructing where there's going to be snow loads and uh, some other smaller load from uh, let's say snow loads definitely you know so but i'll just take uh, the imposed load as 0.7.7 uh, okay all right so that's what i will use for my beam all right so okay okay so we've initiated a load for this so you can just copy it right click copy beam manual load okay then mark we select the entire beam right click on any of the beam and say paste copied beam load so i have successfully pasted all the, the wall load on the beam oh sorry the roof load on the beams okay so when you you're done with this then you can now tell yourself yes i'm almost done i'm good to go okay so once you're done with this uh the next thing you're going to do is to run analysis okay so analysis we're going to check it in our next class so i hope uh, you've been able to do this just the way we did it from start to finish okay i hope you've been able to do that then again you can also come to settings here you can control some other settings let me start with slab settings okay so this is design rip slab i'm not working with rip slab so this is not important to me so minimum moment percentage of span this is by default by the software you don't really need to bother yourself much about this you center line span correct then go to steel bars minimum steel bar based on what i need is y10 i don't want anything you know less than y10 for my minimum bars and uh you can just go through any of this but just leave it at default just change this then if you don't want it to go beyond 250 as your uh, uh, bar spacing you can limit it to 200 this all depends on you okay all right so print number of bar i want to see number of bars printed on the on the uh on the reinforcement okay so that's okay okay go back to settings you come to beam story beam settings okay let's just review one or two things there all right so design mm, we don't really have much to do here 
we don't really have much to do here parameters minimum seal bath I said y12 and uh, maximum 16 I'm, I'm seeing 13 here don't worry that will be corrected later okay this will be corrected later all right save okay so we're going to stop here and when we come back we're going to run analysis and design